here I am, I'm in the chair now. I move around, I'm very mobile. Mm -hmm. It's true. Welcome back to Operation Save Abortion. This is the last big panel of the day. And then when we come back from this one, all of the questions that you maybe didn't get answered in the long haul, where do I go for this? Can you remind us of this person's website? What was the GoFundMe link for that? We are going to answer all of them with some members of the AAF team who can cover all those different bases. So remember to, if you're on Crowdcast, put those questions in the Q&A. And then if you're on YouTube, put those questions in the chat and we're calling them. We'll get to as many of them as we can. And then any question, if we didn't get to your question, please, please, please go to info at operationsaveabortion.com and we will answer your questions then. We want you to feel like you really got it. Also, if you have friends that didn't see this, all of these panels are gonna be up on our website. We're gonna have Spanish subtitles and all of the toolkits are also gonna be translated into Spanish so everybody can have the full experience. It's gonna take us a minute because we're five people and <laughs> doing our best. Um, this panel is near and dear to my heart because this panel is people who are taken to the streets, creating action, and doing some of the work that is exciting, fun, sometimes dangerous, but always impactful. And you just don't really have a movement without folks who take to the streets and to the state houses and anywhere where we can raise awareness and hell, and how we do that, we do it in really different ways. Some of us have the privilege of taking it on right in the face of the oppressors, and we do that because there's people who don't have the safety of doing that. Some of us do it in small and large ways. Some of us do it in big, big production. Some of us do it in really small stealth actions. But disruption and action are key and I'm gonna blow your mind right now. You don't have to be an extrovert to do it because there's ways to help create and process direct action that is at your comfort level. What? I know. So let's meet the panel. Hello, panel. This really feels a little bit more 60 minutes than I'm like used to. It's like, <laughs> so how many of you had an engine that blew up in your truck? <laughs> it's like we're having a big right, we're having a big conversation. But Let's go for it right here. Rocky Gonzalez, you just met Rocky. 30, remember her from 30 minutes ago? Well, Rocky's back. So Rocky, founder of Frontera Fund and deputy director of Austin Justice. Nix Rao is right here from New York City for Abortion Rights. So fun. Aaron Jorgensen, comms director with Shout Your Abortion. Molly Gaby with Abortion Access Front. And Viva Ruiz with Thank God for Abortion. Hello, folks. Hi. 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 Wow. Okay, so in a second, we're gonna individually bring up some photos and have you sort of talk about that. But before we get into the individual stuff, what I wanted to do is just talk about actions in general and how the actions sort of play a role in organizing and just talk a little bit about if your organization wears a bunch of hats, um, Stick with me on the sort of direct action piece part of your organization, right? So I'll start with you, Rock. T tell us a little bit about that. Um, repeat the question for me. Tell, tell you about direct action. So, and just about direct, like how, how your organizations use direct action. Because I know you do a bunch of work, right? So we're going to focus on how you guys use yeah. direct action. In your yeah, so there's a lot of ways um, that we do direct action. I speak from like myself personally in the variety of like collectives, coalitions, and groups that I've been a part of my organizations. Um, and so I think um, one of the things that I like to share with folks is using um, direct action as a community building and organizing um, tool, right? So if you're putting together a rally or if you are someone who really wants to like bring people together, um, you know, one of the things that we do, um, and I'll say I do um, in collaboration with folks across the work that I do, um, is, you know, doing some sort of pre-work to bring people into the action, right? Um, I really love hosting like an art builds before a rally or something like that. Oh, fun. Any kind of opportunity to bring people together, produce art together, so that when we show up for the rally or we show up for the action, we have art that we've built together, we've uh, done some like sort of community building, and when we show 
up together. We've all been a part of the organizing, right? And so um, a rally and an action is a really great thing to have, but when people feel like they were part of making it happen, um, they're more likely to stay involved. They're more likely to know, want to know what comes next. Um, and so I think that is a huge, and it can be, you know, an art build, it can be poster making, it can be sign making, you know, whatever it is, a potluck, um, just bringing folks together to build that community. Um, and I think the other big thing too is ensuring that there's some sort of community safety protocols mm -hmm. in place, mm -hmm. right? Um, if people are putting their bodies on the line or if there is a potential, you know, for some sort of, you know, good civil disobedience, make sure that folks who are involved in that, um, you have their information. If there's going to be arrests that are taking place, make sure that someone is working on a legal fund or we have contact information, emergency contact information of folks that may be putting their um, bodies on the line so that we can take care of them um, once something like that goes on, right? So security um, culture, especially in abortion advocacy, mm -hmm. is really important. And we're not talking about police security. We're talking about community security. That's right. So. Which is why we vet people. And you know, I was gonna, I was gonna tell folks at the end, but I'll say it now because you brought it up. Um, security is something that we really, really focus on, and we're gonna be doing some seminars and webinars um, to talk about security with AAF and DDF and Center for Property Democracy, so that we really get that. So don't organize. I would say learn. We're gonna learn a lot today. Don't organize an action until you've really been able to have those protocols. <coughs> but in our in our to, in our toolkit that's available now, or uh, er, I'm sorry, <coughs> in our community calendar, you can look at um, the ACLU's protocols. And if anybody has tools or or safety protocols checklists, you know, read over those ahead of time so you know. So if you don't hear a ton about security in this conversation, it's because we're going to talk about the different kinds of disruptions but security is key. Thank you. <laughs> Moving on. Nix, talk about New York City for abortion rights and what y'all are doing. Yes, so I think because we try to be like a radical grassroots organization, I think a really big way to show that, you know, we are actually the vast majority on this issue is having that like, like swarm of people come out and like, say proudly and loudly that we love abortion, we're gonna protect abortion. And I think like, even like, regardless of what other work people do in the movement, I think for me, those actions are really re-energizing because I think like, with the amount of focus antis get and the amount of power they've been able to sort of undemocratically could like get in, in like whether that's the courts or politics, it can, you can forget that the vast amount of people actually support this and the vast amount of people want to protect abortion. Um, so I think the real grassroots organizing and building collective people power portion of direct action, like really cannot be underemphasized. I agree, I agree. And I just wanna tell folks at home, there was a study done, and when we talk about say abortion, if you'll notice, almost everyone in this, in this conversation today has the word abortion in the name of their organization. The anti-abortion movement uses the word abortion four times more than those of us who are advocating for it. Mm -hmm. If we can't name it, we can't defend it, full stop. Aaron, <laughs> shout your abortion. Yeah. Talk a little bit about um, the kind of uh, activations that you do and yeah. disruptions. So direct action, I guess, maybe this is for people who don't know what that is or maybe are a little intimidated by that term, which includes me. It's not something I really used in my life up until now. So I would say, don't be scared of the words direct action because it doesn't have to be a huge, big, shiny production. So something we do at SYA is sometimes we might create an action and then maybe kind of like model that for people <clears throat> and do it like a really dialed in version, get lawyers, get security, you know, get doctors, whatever you might need, and then kind of make these materials available for people to use for free. And then sometimes work with other collaborators, other artists, other volunteers across the country, but we like to have a really broad um, a really broad way into direct action. So it could be like a solo direct action. I'm so excited because we're gonna, I'm gonna get into that with you and I'm super excited because I feel like the way that you have really um, made it accessible for people who, uh, on a bunch of different steps, that I can't wait to get to it. Um, Molly, um, talk a little bit about like 
What abortion? What does abortion access front do, Molly, for our direct action? Well, we do a lot of things, but I kind of like to think of what we do as the framework is comedic and strategic. That's why I was so attracted to what Abortion Access Front did in the beginning. I am a comedian. We have so many comedians on staff. Um, so it's a great entry point to come at this issue because so much of it is absurd. And um, the comedic framework is a great way to bring attention to your action. And it's also very cathartic to um, uh, make fun of the anti-abortion side. And there's so many different ways to do it. Uh, we've done huge uh, actions where we're wearing big costumes and then more um, on a lower level solo ones. But we do, it's always with that comedic framework in mind. Yeah, I think that getting people in and exposing hypocrisy and then take it to the next level is good. Because the one thing I never wanted to be was an anger fluffer. And I felt like I was that a long time. Working in corporate comedy, it would be like, well, you can say things but then you're not an activist. And it's like, but I am an activist. So now I can't be, then I'll just leave. Because if I can't tell people what to do, then what's the point of getting people all riled up if they're just gonna sit there in their own like rage? So yeah, Viva hey. Ruiz. That's me. <laughs> Talk um, about Thank God for Abortion. Tell us about how, the, how you do it. Yeah, so um, Thank God for Abortion, um, I'm gonna refer to it as TGFA. Um, so is not is like we're like not an org we're but kind of an org so it's a very strange organism I think more we could say it's an org as far as an organism uh, it started as uh, as a me a design artist project so I want to say for direct action people who knew that this would grow you know it's it's another thing I did and that's the power of one person's voice I'm not everybody has the same power I you know. It's, you say your thing, and I know everybody up here is, is doing that, and even if you're not doing, like direct action could be so many things, in my opinion. A conversation is a direct action mm -hmm. for me. Um, and so this project came out of conversations, that action, and very local, like, I made a t-shirt, and like Erin was saying, you know, we make tools, we started making tools that people could use, and so that they didn't have to think of tools, you know. Um, and, and that's how we started, and, and I come from nightlife. This is queer magic. This is queer medicine. Um, um, I'm a non-binary non person who's had multiple abortions, and, um, you know, this is a very natural language for me to be speaking. Um, a key key is very natural for me. A, turning a look is very natural for me, and so it's just the way I tell my story is through this. But it's been cute to, ha to make things that other people can use. Mm -hmm. And it's and direct action, like Erin said, is, is something anybody can do. That's right. That's right. And I love, I, I'm just so excited to be able to break down each of your work and, and those tools. Because I think that finding yourself in what those are is good. And I'm going to go to you, Erin, because um, we, we've, we've touched on it a couple of times. Um, introverted people can do direct action. Uh, and... If you don't think of yourself as doing that, um, let's give you some tools. And it's not always marching. It's not always getting arrested. It's really being present. And quite frankly, being a person in the world who has decided that your humanity and your values matter in saying so is a radical act in patriarchy. And so even just being in the world and demanding joy is a radical act. And so I don't want you to forget it. But so Erin, we've talked about um, sort of spice levels of, of um, activism. You know, it's like, I'm a, I'm a little spicy. I feel a little bit comfortable with this. Or, you know, you want to get in and go hot. So let's take it um, a little bit of a mild action, let's say. Um, and what that can look like for somebody when we talk about direct action, we talk about something that feels like, um, you want to make an impact, but you don't necessarily want to be maybe out in the middle of the of a crowd. Uh -huh. So, yeah, sometimes we use mild, medium, and spicy at SY, and just kind of on levels of, like, visibility, not necessarily levels of, like, danger, or because some people who are doing, like, spiciest sounds the coolest, I think, but some people are doing, like, the spiciest work, and you'll never even know mm -hmm. who they are. Mm -hmm. you know? So this is just kind of, like, based on, like, visibility, maybe. So, um, yeah, I would say maybe a mild action might be something, and I, I would kind of consider myself in this category a lot of the time, so I'll use myself as, like, a model. Um, you might do something like s 
put a bunch of stickers up recently. I went to Eastern Washington, which is where I grew up, and you can just put a bunch of informational stickers or even stickers that just say the word abortion, and I just put them in a bunch of like <coughs> restrooms in Eastern Washington, which is a really conservative, lots of like farmers, uh, so like people with guns and I like I'm wearing a shirt that says like I weighed in a bit of abortion but I wouldn't I wouldn't wear that in eastern Washington that would be you, you'll get your nose broken or like go to jail you know what I mean so it's kind of like pick pick your level so yeah stickering is a good one I think also having a conversation can be uh you know it can feel like a very extreme action but you know if, if it's one-on-one -on -one that I feel pretty comfortable doing that I think a lot of introverts are also good at the internet and that's like a lot of my job mm -hmm. so I have tons of conversations I feel like I'm very talking to people a lot there but I'm not like this is a little bit much for me being like, like on camera you know uh, I prefer to be like behind the scenes but often talking to a lot of people on the internet I think that's something that introverts can do as well and we have a lot of materials that are kind of in the mild, medium, and spicy range. Like a mild one might be like this button that says abortion access is a community responsibility. And that's very <clears throat> inviting and like nice and inviting people in. And then we have ones that say, we will save us, which is kind of similar. And then we have ones that are more like spicy that say, you know, like Fox SCOTUS. And <laughs> you, know, you could put that poster on your lawn or you could wear a shirt. It just depends on like who you are and how engaged you feel like being. But yeah, I think there's a lot of a lot of ways in for people who are quiet. And I think just kind of getting clear on who you are and what your talents are is kind of where that's gonna come, where that's gonna become helpful. Like I'm a musician, so I do a lot of stuff in, in that vein. I produce a lot of concerts and recently did like a kind of, you know, classical avant-garde music concert, but everybody was wearing like, I will aid in a bet abortion shirts, which is kind of like, I never see that in the classical world, you know? So people in there were having like a, conversation about abortion and it's like mild because it's like a controlled environment and people are like playing the cello or whatever you know but but uh that's something that I really like you know so that's something that's easy for me to slot into so maybe people can think about what their skills are what their talents are what they really like and figure out a way to like make that abortion I think that is so wise and you know something that we don't talk about enough is especially something that I know has been frustrating um working in intersectional work is when you hear people, people that look like me, who will say, you know, I just, whenever my parents or aunt says something terrible about or I just walk away, or they say something racist, and it's like, if you don't take to the streets, if you can't take to your family first, they love you. You have a foundation there of people, like if you're saying to me, I really love them, but they're racist, it's like, well, uh, if you really love them, maybe you should actually challenge them because you're a person they love, you know? Like, so that to me is like one of those actions where like that's always an action to take. And um, I love that. I love those insights. So, okay. So let's talk about a little, um, I want to get into the work because the work y'all are doing is great. And Erin, I'm just going to stay with you and then we'll move because um, we're doing it. So the first, because <laughs> um, we're just doing it. So the first action I want to bring up for Erin is the projection. One of your projections, which I really, really love. And it's the projection after the SCOTUS decision came down. And um, the, we want to get to the projections if we can. No, nope. we're gonna get to that one, but <laughs> I wanted to get to the projections. You guys are doing great. Um, or we can talk about this. Um, so, talk, okay. Or we can't, we'll get there. <laughs> I have no stress. Things happen. Um, what do you want, Liz? I want the graphic of the projections on the building. The projection graphic. We don't have it? Oh. Okay, so then let's go back to um, abortion pills at SCOTUS. Abortion pills at SCOTUS. Yep. Okay. The other one. There we go. So, <laughs> I would say, how would you rank this in your uh, mild, medium, spicy... Um, I mean, I would say it was like spicy because it's pretty visible and we were all taking uh, Mifepristone, which is the first pill taken in a medication abortion. 
And uh, yeah, so this action had a couple of goals. One was just to like spread the word widely about abortion pills and frankly to like get a, get a photo in media. So that's why this was all like pretty like dialed in. I chose this picture of me because I look cute. There's yes, <laughs> there's 100%, other, right? There's other pictures where everybody else looks cuter, one. but. Uh, yeah, so one was to uh, <laughs> to spread the word about abortion pills, just let people know that they exist. Um, and the second one was basically to defy any kind of like unjust laws in a really obvious way. This was before the decision came down. So I think it was a very like spicy event to be like, we don't care, we don't care what your decision is. We're having abortions and this is how we do it and we're helping each other have abortions. So... Uh, yeah, I, and it would, you know, it can be a little bit scary, but yeah, we had like security there, and that event in particular was like extremely dialed in. That's what I, I wanted to talk a little bit about that because that happened on December 1st, right? When we were there. And for those of you that were not at the Supreme Court on the day of the hearing of the Dobbs case, um, it was inundated mm -hmm. with the most extreme anti abortion people that we normally see outside of clinics and they had massive signs and they were incredibly aggressive. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing y'all there and being so excited. I would wondered if you could talk a little bit about what it was like being in that environment, mm -hmm. in that swarm of just belligerent, I mean, they were literally saying, you should die if you have a screaming. You should die if you have abortions. Yeah, they it, were out of pocket. It was. It was. It was, it was way. I mean, it was so. And normally they don't show up at those things. It's the. It's normally other hateful people, and so this strain of cretin was really intense. And so, tell me a little bit about how you felt and the vulnerability around being surrounded by, hearing yeah. the messaging of I want to punish you while you're doing this thing. Yeah, to be honest, for me, it felt great, actually, because we did have security there. I was surrounded by people who I knew were gonna take care of me. And since the action was to say, I don't care what you think, I'm doing this anyway, it really felt good to me to be like, we're taking abortion pills. And also, I have a background in like performance art, and that's kind of how it felt to me. It was like, antis go, you know, like <laughs> pro people go. So I was like, I, I kind of get this vibe a little bit. But it felt, it felt really good to me, and I'm not saying that people shouldn't be like afraid or scared or like take care of themselves when that kind of um, energy is there. But for me, um, it felt super positive and I didn't feel afraid of them. And I, I mean, I left like right away. I didn't engage with any of them. But and also you were good. just so wise. And as you laid it out, you know, we had security there. Mm -hmm. We thought about it. We knew like the steps that you take for these things to make it effective and, and meaningful is incredible. Um, let's go to you, Rock. Let's go. Let's take a look. See uh, at what we got here from uh, from Texas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think they're calling for the graphics. Um, let's come up, Texas. So this was, if I'm not mistaken, um, I don't wanna say first round, but maybe I can. The first round of when the public became very aware of the oppression Texas was facing. Is that a fair way to frame it? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so 2013. 2013. Um, talk a little bit before we talk about this picture. Will you talk about the energy? And for those of you who need a touch tone, this was when uh, Rick Perry was governor. Um, this series of laws, 26 states dropped this same law. I think a lot of people don't realize that. And, and, and this is where Wendy Davis filibustered to give you the framing. Will you talk a little bit, because I've seen the pictures and the activism around y'all was remarkable. Talk about what, what it was like within the walls of the Texas State House and what y'all were up against. Yeah, my I didn't expect it to have my heart started beating really quickly when I saw this. Um, yeah, so this is 2013, um, and um, we were facing HB2 at the time, and I, um, I chose these um, to talk about today because there's a lot of folks who are new who are watching, and I, I kind of wanted to set a, like, this has been going on, mm -hmm. um, and um, in this space and in other spaces, I've been telling people like, let's not like use the 
you know, coat hanger imagery, and you can see it there actually on me. I'm the E there. Um, I just want to say, like, I have learned a lot doing mm -hmm. this work Same. Um, over the years. Um, so I was, you know, you know, wanted to put that out there. Um, but it was hostile uh, inside. Um, it was um, scary and it was loud, um, but the larger sort of um, vibe was one of power. Like I have, I have not um, since or before then been in a space where so many people were coming together and demonstrating the kind of power that we did um, inside the Capitol over the course of those many, many weeks. Um, and so what you're, the first picture with the, with the shame, that was um, a, um, a direct action that was um, organized and you can't see it here, but this is the, this is above looking down in the west rotunda of the Texas Capitol and we, organized a funeral procession, essentially, and we had a bunch of folks in these like black um, coats, and um, this rotunda was just outside one of the uh, committee hearing um, rooms so that when all of those folks came out of the committee, they had to see sort of the funeral procession and then um, um, us laying there um, on the ground um, inside the Capitol. Um, and then in, in the next photo, so, so over, over the course of many, many weeks, um, because we had the session and then it went into a special session, um, the attention really grew on, on what was happening in Texas. And um, the folks that I was organizing with um, at this time um, were part of a um, collective um, that we founded called Rise Up Texas. Um, and just shout out to my folks in Rise Up Texas, um, you know, Rocio and, and Yatzel and, and um, Candice and Lisa and all the many, many of you who were um, around um, and like in this with me. Um, I miss you and I love you. Um, but um, we organized a series of actions every day. We were at living at the Capitol. We were there for, at 7 a.m. and we were not leaving till midnight. And um, it, it was also my first experience, but there was really truly a like, um, like a global audience, right? Like people from around the world were watching. People were um, from Germany, from Italy, from South America, from all these places, from all over the US, like ordering pizza and sending it to mm -hmm. us at the Capitol. Mm -hmm. They were ordering donuts and like sending us food and, and things like that um, to the Capitol. And it wasn't to, you know, the national orgs that were there or the electeds, they were sending it to this like little body of like ragtag, you know, like young activists who were, who were, who were doing this. And the, the beautiful thing about um, what was happening at that time was it wasn't just what was going on inside the Capitol, but the lawns outside the Texas Capitol are big and beautiful. And we just started having these massive sort of general assemblies um, on the lawn outside the Capitol. So then, you know, it started out with, you know, maybe, 20 to 50 people, and then it just kept growing, you know, uh, down the line, they started referring to us as an unruly mob. Right? Yes, like the unruly that, mob. The unruly yeah. mob, yeah, so it got, you know, kind of blown up that way, but more and more people started showing up on the daily, and so it wasn't just like this one action, it was this like life of direct action over the course of all of these weeks, and so there was, you know, um, we had folks who signed up and got in line early enough to like get into the chambers and throw tampons, right? Like that was a thing. Um, we were accused of some, at some point of like throwing feces. Yeah, which didn't yeah, I remember happen. that. There, were, it, there was at one point I remember. It was hashtag poop gate. But poop like, gate, but that, also there was also, that. are they bringing jars of pee in was also a weird thing. And it was just like, yeah. wow, they'll just say anything. Yeah. Ha, ha, ha. That was when we first thought, oh, the disinformation. We did throw the tampons, <laughs> but there was, that, that whole thing was, was um, not true. Um, but yeah, it was just, you know, folks showing up and we were organizing as a collective and we had created just like impromptu, like committees of people who were going to like be on the social media, you know, folks. And this is like, we don't you know, people were just showing up wearing orange, wanting to do something. Mm -hmm. And so it was just days and weeks of, um, we're going to do this funeral procession. We're going to, uh, march around the Capitol. We're going to have a sit in here and there. Um, and it all sort of culminated over the night of um, when Wendy, like famously, did the filibuster. And that was important, but what, you know, 
we really want people to know is that it was like the organizing outside and the media that we brought from all of the direct actions that we were doing that really brought people from not just around Austin there in the capital, but around the state people were coming and people all over the world were watching and it had this enormous impact, you know. Um, and the culmination of the night of the filibuster was late, um, you know, it was somewhere between 10 and midnight maybe. Um, but the capital at Texas, which is the largest capital, state capital in the country, was packed. So there's this, when you enter the capital, there's this big rotunda and there's five levels, um, all, you know, that you can like look down onto the rotunda and ev we had the rotunda floor filled and every level of the rotunda was full of people and everyone was yelling and we were singing um, and screaming and raging and it was so loud inside the Capitol, so loud, thunderously loud that they could not hear one another inside the chambers. And, and they that were chaos caused to them to, that's, that's right. right. And so they could not cast the vote because they could not record it and they could not hear one another because of how fucking loud we so were. So this is and why showing up passed. is so important. And I, we, th we can do a whole panel just on the organizing around that, but I want to, we'll move on, but I just want to say, Think about that. When someone asks you to show up at the Capitol or something, yeah. have a plan. Have a plan to know that, like, you may be there for a couple of days. Shifts, all that stuff. It's so great. I mean, that was just incredible. Viva, I'm going to go to you because the action that we're going to show for you <clears throat> kind of goes back to it's this visual, but it's also you, right? So um, as we bring up, I don't even want to talk about the picture until people see the picture because when they see the picture, they're going to be like, oh my goodness. So here is Viva. Viva, if people don't know where you are, um, tell people where you are, how this came to be, and what the reactions were. Yes, this is the motherfucking Vatican <laughs> in Rome. <laughs> oh, yes. In Rome, you may have heard of it, where the Pope lives. <laughs> <laughs> and the center of, you know, Catholicism, that part of Christian, that branch of Christianity. Um, first of all, let me say, Rocky, I was watching in Brooklyn. Don't make me cry. And that literally is part of this, mm -hmm. like what you did. Me too. Abs my reactivation. I swear to God. I said God. Um, I meant God. Um, yes, that is so beautiful to hear you because I was watching and I, that really pushed me. And that's what we do for each other. We're inspiring each other and like, well, what can you do? What can I do? What can you do? And so this is, um, I've been, I come from, uh, I've been mentored and loved by um, people who were in ACT UP in those days of, there's still, the AIDS is not over, right? AIDS is not over. Um, and there's still act activism on the part of ACT UP and, um, and people with AIDS. And yes, yeah, so um, I learned about a photo. I learned about the power of, of an image. And that is also TGFA. The graphic is very connected to, um, you know, the Grand Fury. Um, mm -hmm. You know, at the time there were, Grand Fury was like a, a, the squad of ACT UP that were advertising people and they used their design, graphic design skills, you know, toward movement, yep. which we all know those images. And I grew up in New York around those images. And so that is that starkness, you know, at the time um, when we emerged, you know, to have a black and white graphic around abortion, to have joy in abortion is it wasn't, I hadn't seen it. I hadn't seen joy in the realm of abortion and I hadn't seen God. Mm -hmm. and, and I am Catholic. I mean, I had stopped calling myself that for a while for obvious reasons. And then, um, but abortion has brought me back to God, mm. capital G God in that way, who, who I did love when I was a child. So it is a part of my, it's my authentic experience and that you can't beat authentic mm -hmm. experience. And that's why we need everybody's voices because nobody right. has your that's right. story. I'm looking at you. Uh, so this, <laughs> So, uh, and all our intersections. So one of my intersections is my family are immigrants from Ecuador. My mom never really traveled a lot. She worked in factories and did that thing where you can only work, right? Because pe poor people are not given pleasure, allowed pleasure, leisure. And I took my mom on my miles to Rome because she didn't know Europe. And now because of this project, it is a gift from God for me because it's like, what can I do here? How, who can I meet? It's a, 
connective tissue, you know, like what can we, uh, you know, I love to meet people in, in wherever I travel that are like in, the, in this realm somehow. Abortion people are my favorite people. And so I was in Rome, I took an afternoon off. I was um, Shout Your Abortion's first artist in residence and Shout Your Abortion paid for that fucking look for Pride in New York, but I knew I was gonna roam, so I had, you know, repurposed, because when you're, you know, you don't have the, the backing, and I, we are an organism, but not an org, so I was like, I'm getting it for Pride, but I'm gonna use it for Rome. So I took an afternoon, I said, I'll see you in a bit, Mom, I hope. <laughs> And um, I was with a partner at the time, and my friend, who was at ACT UP uh, OG, happened to be passing through Rome. And, and it, it take, it's friends. For me, movement building, uh, what I can call movement building now, is relationship. Mm -hmm. It's very local. I work very locally. The project is very locally inspired, even though, you know, there's this, like, the right wing and the fascist, but the, projects the project was inspired by the left, by the betrayal I felt of the left. That my cis women friends were like, have a baby or you're gonna regret it. That's a big part of this, you know, that, that was not for me. And, and also cis gay men who were like, you know, having a, a sexual revolution, but we don't have ab abortions going backwards. And, yeah. you know, a lot of us, that's not news. Mm -hmm that abortion was like, that this was on its way, right? <laughs> so in New York City, where it's like, you know, you're supposed to be in all this, like, whatever, sexual liberation, I mean, at that time, in 2014, I was, I was like, why is this so taboo? So anyway, the graphic, and I was in Rome, and I brought my poster, and I brought this look, and I was like, we're gonna do a hit and run. Oh, also safety, when we don't have the resources of security, right? Because a lot of us don't, I don't. And, um, and I'm scared, you know, I'm, I have a healthy fear when I go out. I'm not like fearless, that's not me. I have physical abuse in my story, I have sexual abuse in my story, I'm saying that to tell you that like that is a part of this, that I know I can't, I'm not safe in a lot of like actions that other people feel safe. Mm -hmm. I know that looks like it takes a lot of nerve and it does, <laughs> it does, but you know, I was like, I'm gonna put this on, we're gonna hit and run, we're gonna take the image, gonna do a little video and we're gonna split. And basically we stayed out there a little bit longer cause, um, cause you get carried away and you're like, you know what, this feels great. And then you feel like the energy, uh, I it's felt the amazing. energy of the Vatican, I felt the energy of the saints, I felt the energy of you know, the people who have suffered at the hands of the church and they, it is an evil institution of course and yet they don't own God and God is, is real in my life. And I wanna, I wanna say that that is great because we have to get, we have to, yes. we're, we're, temp, we're already have just a little time left. So, um, but I wanna say is, I'm so thankful that you are bringing back religion into the conversation because, and making with the whole entire look, when I see you in any one of your looks, I feel inspired and I feel like you bring something back and elicit a conversation about abortion religion, about patriarchy, about all of it in ownership, and it's really incredible. Yeah. Um, Nick, I'm gonna go to you next. Uh, so y'all are in the streets and bringing people together and meeting, meeting the oppressors where they are in, in a various ways. And so, um, I can't remember which photo we have. I think we have the one at the um, Federalist Society event, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, we do. So y'all went up to the Federalist Society to an event, um, organized around it. Talk a little bit about what that was like and did you catch them off guard? So this is actually a clinic defense. Oh, is this the clinic defense? But I can talk about the federal. Oh no, I, I couldn't tell what, this was such chaos that yeah. I was like, is this the Planned Parenthood event? Because I couldn't tell. This is actually the Planned Parenthood event. So, all oh, right, back um, us up then and tell us a little bit about what this monthly action is that you do in New York because I think it's very yes. replicatable. Yes, I think like the biggest thing I want people to take away from this is that church processions, which basically include all the terrible people we were talking about that showed up at the Supreme Court on December 1st, um, that basically go from, this is from Old St. Pat's to the Soho Planned Parenthood, which is like a two block walk, basically. 
um, and they harass patients when they get there. And they have a lot of misleading information. They carry pamphlets with them that is just entirely bullshit. Um, they are there for the explicit purpose of shaming people. Um, and so what we try to do is we try to delay them by forming a blockade. So what you're seeing is over here, the cops are who escort, the NYPD escorts the clinic harassers. Mm -hmm. um, but they're, that's, that side are the antis and the rest of us are blocking and walking backwards as slowly as possible to delay their um, reaching the clinic. And the longest we've been able to hold them off this two block radius is 90 minutes. And every single minute we hold people off, that's another minute where someone is able to walk into that Planned Parenthood and access care without stigmatization, without harassment. So like when people talk about the importance of coming out and like what happens if I come out to a protest, right? Like what am I actually achieving? Like we, every single one of the people who can't come out to our clinic defenses adds delay, mm -hmm. adds mm -hmm. delay, adds like an, an individual standing up against these people, which means that they take longer to literally move. I love that. And I think that it, it sort of combines everything everyone's talking about. It's building community at these events. There's music. And you're not just like going like this. People are dancing in front of them so they can't move. It's a, it is really one, it's, it's a really beautiful thing. And I, I love that direct action can also mean s stopping harm, not just raising awareness about harm, but stopping harm. And that's the thing that I really love most about that action. And, um, and I think we're gonna move up to Molly and talk about abortion access front, because I think we kind of take a lot of that. We, we will do big public events, we will, we travel to the oppressors. We sort of take it one step further and sometimes we'll travel to the oppressors and I think, um, in this particular action that we're going to set up, um, there's an organization that's called Operation Save America, and we actually call this event Operation Save Abortion to fuck with them. Mm -hmm. And actually, they forgot to renew their domain name, Operation, and so we redirected it to this. That's a direct action. Wow. So awesome. that is a direct action, and it is the most awesome thing ever. Um, and they're mad about it. But they have their big national event. Just to give you a little bit of history on them, they, um, they started as Operation Rescue, expanded into this secondary organization. Um, their leader was at the insurrection. They are people who have those big bloody signs. They are people who will go to towns and they will go to a neighborhood of a position that provides abortion and leaflet the neighborhood to say Ann Smith on 123 Walnut Street is a baby murderer. Uh, they will go outside of mosques and burn Korans. They disrupt any kind of like queer storytelling, anything, any church that is actually inclusive, they will go and harass. They're monsters. They're monsters. They actually have training sessions to rise up and create Christian armies, and they're the worst. So they have a national um, gathering every year in a different city. And every year, Abortion Access Front gathers a consortium of people, and we travel and disrupt their meetings, disrupt their street preaching, and disrupt their shit. So Molly, um, let's throw Molly's photo up to talk about what we are doing here, um, which is one of the things they do is they go to a state capitol and they do something called the ecclesiastical court. And it is literally oppressors standing up and saying that they have the right in the Bible to disobey all laws, giving them the right to violence, giving them the right to misogyny and patriarchy. So Molly, talk about how we responded to that at this place. I don't know, this is self-explanatory, isn't it? <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. <laughs> so basically what they do, their ecclesiastical court, it's like a public Christian tribunal where they put um, man's laws on, on trial uh, because it violates God's laws. So this is again where the comedy comes in. We basically did a parody of exactly that. And we, uh, sh we have our Jesus and the glittery, glittery vulva um, hosted the uh, our version of the ecclesiastical court, and we had people to come and testify on behalf of science and facts and truth and um, witness to the crimes that OSA has actually committed. And um, this picture to me brings up 
what you were talking about, Aaron, like it just was very joyful and like just a way of establishing community and, and um, laughter in the midst of some very, very serious, awful um, hate being spread. Um, so that's another reason why I love these kinds of actions because it shows the community that you're in that they are not the dom dominant voice, mm -hmm. that there mm -hmm. are pro-abortion pro people who are fun and cool. So much cooler. So much, so much cooler. cooler. <laughs> and they also are very, with Operation uh, Save America specifically, mm -hmm. they're very um, vaginal oriented and they're very weirdly minded of like shut your legs and very like aggressively um, sexualizing. And so we purposely chose aggressively sexualizing language to come back at them. And it was the first time they'd been confronted and it felt like great. We also had a giant, we called it the Garbage Fire Festival. We had a 15 foot inflatable garbage can that we've dragged around like the anti-union rat and everywhere they were, we had this inflatable garbage can and we just screamed at them. We also made posters of them, like the same size as their fetus posters that gave the stats of all their monstrous behaviors with their huge pictures on them. And it was really good to drive around a town and let people know um, what they were doing. Um, all of your actions are awesome. All of your actions are meaningful. People know that um, they've, they've looked in the stream